Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regularly scheduled council meeting for January 18th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Nice to see everyone. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you'd call roll, please. Short Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. Here. Councilman Nowakowski. Here. <coughs> Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Councilman Roadwell. Here. Five members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation was going to be done by uh, Chief Trustee, but obviously he had to leave for an uh, emergency. Uh, so tonight will be done by Mr. William Lindsay. Your heads, please. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this evening, Father, to give us guidance and business for the city tonight. Father, we ask you to keep your hand upon the firefighters that's on the structure fire this evening, Lord. Let none of them be injured or hurt, Father. Father, we pray for the family that the, that the building is burning for. Father, we ask you to also uh, comfort and keep our city administration, our firefighters, and our police department. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> that was quick. Oh, wow. It was quick. And a large legal <laughs> part. I'll still just went up. All right. Everything okay, Chief? Yeah, it's a large illegal burn. Okay. <laughs> All righty, moving on. I need uh, action on the minutes for the regular scheduled council yeah. meeting January 3rd, 2022. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Rodewall, second by Mr. Lindsay. Any discussion, council, on those minutes? When you're ready, please. Councilman Rodewall? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. And Councilman Lindsay? Yes. The minutes are accepted 5-0. Right, thank you very much. And then dropping down to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'm uh, here to discuss the city manager's report. Um, we are wearing masks today. We did have an associate go home today uh, with, a, with a positive COVID result. So just to sure one, we are being cautious for everyone. We are fully vaccinated. Um, so we'll start with our police report uh, presented by Deputy Harris. Yes. Good to see both of you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, we got two here who's on the streets. Council citizens, uh, excuse me for reading off my phone. I have the stats uh, a little late, but uh, I'll be reading the stats for uh, the Sheriff's Office in New Carlisle for the month of December. Um, during the month of December, uh, New Carlisle deputies patrolled 5,276 miles. We took 172 calls for service um, and took 32 reports on those calls. We had 51 assists outside the city of New Carlisle, uh, eight criminal arrests. Um, of those eight, there were five felonies and three misdemeanors. There were six warrants um, served in the city of New Carlisle, uh, 79 traffic stops. Of those 79, there were 58 warnings and 21 citations. Uh, 292 business checks were conducted um, and 310 citizens were contacted outside of calls for service. Council, any questions or comments for Deputy Harris? All right. Thank you, Deputy Harris Thank you. and Mr. Garman. Nice to see you as well, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Harris. Moving on with the city manager report, our fire and EMS report with Chief Trustee. Council, <laughs> citizens, for the month of December, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 77 EMS calls in the city and 30 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 11 fire-related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. We had four EMS calls answered by either Mutual Aid by Pike Township or Bethel Park, due to Medic 52 being on the response. We answered three Mutual Aid calls for Pike Township. We answered four mutual for uh, Bethel Park. Uh, also, the new staff car is now in service. We'd like to thank the citizens and the council for the new staff car is greatly needed. Uh, the, the car was paid for in full. It is ours. We owe no debt. Thank you, Chief. Council, any questions or comments? Mr. Rodwell. Yeah, Chief Trustee, out of those, uh, what would be 107 total calls between uh, New Carolina and Elizabeth Township, now, do you know how many of those were COVID related? Right now, we're an averaging about one every other call is a COVID related call. Okay. As, 
this none of not, not saying all those are confirmed, but uh, some of those are either the person has already had COVID, was getting over COVID, or is suspected of having COVID. Um, right now, uh, it's as everyone knows, it's it's okay. going rampant. Thank you. Uh, I just want to piggyback off of his question, actually. So, if you're getting COVID calls, are they because they just they're they're you know nervous or scared that they think they have it, or is it a respiratory issue? I mean, what kind of calls are they? I can't say. Good point. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. He got. Some. I have yeah. a Sir, I have a question. Yes, sir. Chief, Chief when will the uh, new staff car be uh, placard? Uh, we uh, contacted Studio Ten here in here in the city. We wanted to keep the money in the city. Uh, she's ordered the. Uh, the reflective decaling for us, and she'll be doing that as soon as it comes in. Okay. Does it have to be a certain temperature for that goes on or not? Um, she should be able to put it inside to get it up temperature to be able to put it on. Okay. Thank you. And the cost for that? Don't know yet. It, okay. It's, it's okay. going to be a little. It'll be a little pricey because everything has to be uh, reflective. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Thanks, Fire Chief. And moving on to City Manager report, our finance report with our finance director, Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, and citizens. I'll try to speak up since I have the mask on, it covers up. So the first report that I wanted to put out, I have a few extra copies, is our end of the year final. <clears throat> so at the end of December, our uh, total revenue received was $8 million $826,069.16 and our total expenditures for the entire year 2021 was $7,571,827.03. So I just put a little cover sheet together with some of our highlights from the, uh, the year and some of our capital improvements that we were able to do with our funding this year included the demo of Madison Street the um, security cameras at our city building that was paid out of the general fund. We have startup software and some miscellaneous expenditures for the mayor's court to be started with. That is 16,300 and that's out of the general fund. I'm not sure, did I say the 8,000 for the demo Madison? It was 8,400 plus the security cameras. The General Fund's planning department uh, received their new vehicle, and that was 21800 uh, Again, General Fund. Uh, the Finance Department received um, or spent $6,500 for new uh, computers for the department. We hadn't, have not had any for a very long time, so they have upgraded our computers. And the other out of the general fund paid out of the parks department, the lot paving here at the shelter, that was $19,500. The street department capital improvement was a new mower, that was 8,000. The ambulance department uh, split the vehicle that uh, the chief was talking about. They shared the cost for their new roof and the Lucas tool. That came to $83,000. Fire department, Capital was Jaws of Life, boots, helmets, shared cost of the vehicle and the roof, and that was 94500 Police levy, um, $55,900 was spent for their new vehicle, plus radar units and a shared portion of the uh, demo of the old substation. Water department spent $45,000 to demo the water tower, and they got some trench equipment. The pool, um, 11800 was for some remodeling of the security cameras and an AED. The cemetery spent 7000 for roof repairs. So those are a lot of our capital improvements highlighted. There's a lot of other little amounts. And then our debt payments are also listed on the sheet. I won't go over all of those in, in uh, detail, but we have several debts that will be paid off this year and next year. Um, I can explain more if anybody would like. Going back to the regular December finance report, for the month of December, we receded $525,253.73. And for December, we did spend $733,183.35. Our uh, statement of cash ending balance at the end of the year is $5,746,809. And 45 cents. 
the end of the year for the tax collection, then um, we received $1,739,964, which was a 9.9, .9, almost 10% increase from this time last year. And I have a few other little items, but they're all included in the packet. So I can entertain any questions or any other detail. Council, I have a question. Sure. <laughs> We're still paying on Twin Creeks, right? We are. That debt for Twin Creeks, we spend about $78,000 a year. That's what we spent last year, and it's due to be paid off in 2026. Okay, thank you. Huh? Sure. That's what I want, when it paid off. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Ms. Harris, for the report. Thank good you. numbers, good information. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I motion to approve the financial report. Or do you second. Think? Motion by Mr. Rodwell, second by Mr. Vice Mayor Grimm to approve the finance report. <coughs> Councilman Okowski? Yes. Yeah, Councilman Lindsay? Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. And a motion to accept okay. the finance report accepted 5 0. <coughs> Back to you, Mr. Bridge. All right, and um, so another thing I wanted to the piggyback off Ms. Harris' report, she is a fantastic finance director. I mean, we're in a much better place because of her expertise. Uh, but our voters did pass a few levies that, is, that has helped our finances out for the city a great deal. Um, and then Colleen, with her report, I did a statement of cash, and I just did something a little more user-friendly today just to give percentages and change and stuff like that. So just to give the audience an idea of, of just how well we are doing financially. Um, and. Where's that overview report at? The general fund balance in 2015 was, hold on. Thank you. Uh, 2014, it was $52,442. And this year in 2021, we ended with $1,983,546. So we're on our way to, to get a lot of the uh, operating reserve that, that we definitely should have. But what I did is we made council just a sheet like this. If we want one, we have a few extra copies. Overall, across all funds, we are up 17%. Um, that is great considering the pandemic we just were going through. A lot of cities saw a reduction in how much they're bringing in, and we were the outlier. We were ones who actually did a little bit better than most of us. But, just take into account, like again, I wanted to re reiterate in a few short years how much we have on the verge of really shaping the city financially. And these numbers don't lie. So it's everyone involved. Um, but, you know, we've got a fantastic finance director that manages all this money. But we definitely should spend some time and, and talk about these fund balances uh, today. That's why I wanted to bring it up before we moved on. So hats off to everybody, especially the voters. Because of you, the city is starting to turn the corner financially, and these numbers actually prove it. Yep. Okay, so we are moving on with the city manager report, and right now we're going to do our service report. Mr. Kiko, he is not with us today, uh, so I'll go ahead and read it for the record. Uh, Public Works Department, uh, please call in potholes to the street department at 937-845-3058. We will be uh, utilizing cold patch until the spring for potholes. Um, and uh, C says that we, they will be performing some winter tree removal work. And the water department says sanitary survey updating the number of private well locations to complete our backflow pro program. Says Adams Street Towers demo is 90% 90, 90 complete. I do believe the other 10% is just the foundation that hasn't been removed yet. The city still needs to remove the foundation and water line. The city has selected a local contractor removed during the winter. Uh, it says we have submitted water infrastructure grant in the amount of 2.5 million to replace lead service lines, um, water main and main line water valves that are 85 years old in the old section of town. Under the sewer department, it says engineering agreement has been executed to start engineering and bidding process for the secondary clarifier, number one. A clear stream representative will be out soon to measure current clarifier for construction of new clarifier number two. American Rescue Plan funds and minimal local water wastewater funds. Estimated 295,000 with ARPA federal 10,000 local. OP, OPWC grant to pay 50% of the cost of primary clarifier two was approved uh, with matching funds from American Rescue Plans. OPWC funds of 98,500 and 98,500 out of the ARPA federal funds. And for 2022 road reconstruction resurfacing projects, 
He has Clark County resurface project preparing for 2022 list of roads to resurface. And he submitted to Clark, Springfield Clark County TCC, a task order for an engineer to evaluate the curbs and ADA ramps on state route 235. Results are scheduled to go back to the city in order to perform the work this summer plans prior to resurfacing in 2023. Council has any questions for Mr. Kitko? I can definitely get them back to him. Council. Yes. We didn't plow very many streets, did we? For this snow? Yes. I think it's two inches or more than we go out and plow. Yep. I've had a number of complaints. One of them was from Paula Crew, mm -hmm. superintendent of Tecumseh Schools. She said the main reason she closed schools today was the condition of our city streets. Um, our city residents have supported this city every, every time we've asked them. They've passed police levies, they've passed fire levies, they've passed EMS levies, they've passed street levies. The least we could do is plow and salt their street. I don't disagree with you, but it's a policy that a prior council has set at two inches. So if you guys want that lowered, it would be you guys that set the policy to do that, sir. I move we change the policy. Can I ask that we actually do some numbers on that? We have some information back to you for the next meeting? Because if you make that down, we're going to look at how much so well, so uh, road salt we have on staff and all that stuff. Okay. But we can have some information to you the next meeting for sure. Okay. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right. <clears throat> And does the rest of council want that information before we move forward? About how much more salt it would yeah, be? Yeah, like they'll be interested in re reducing how, how often we plow. <coughs> Let's start with that first. Reducing? Reducing how much? Reducing the, the, the reducing cut off. Cut off. Just starting. Lowering or reducing it from, from two inches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fine with me. I don't mind if he wants to put something together. Okay, so let's do a motion. <laughs> you want Sir, I'd also like to know what the extra cost is going to be if we start plowing it at an inch versus the two and the salt difference in cost between the two, if that's possible. Uh, how we may have those records somewhere. The, whenever, how, however, however you guys word your motion is how we will, I will instruct and write down how you guys want me to look at. It. So however you word your motion. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, I make a motion that we have the city manager give us information on the cost of lowering the snow level from two inches to one inch and what the cost is to plow that at one inch and the salt uh, cost at one inch. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Did I leave anything out, gentlemen, ma'am? <laughs> How much snow did we get? We only got about, we, we didn't even get two we inches. We didn't even get two inches. It has nothing to do with the amount of snow in this case. It had to do with probably the temperature and how fast it came in. And well, and, and the so fact that traffic was slow yesterday because it, it was a federal holiday. Yeah, it was a holiday. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't plow my road. Yeah, I mean. Well, I was out in township and all the roads were clear except where it obviously blown across. Some people. They even plowed the streets in Brant, for goodness sakes. Well, the state does. Well, that. the state does that. Yeah. No. Two thirty-five and forty is done mm -hmm. by the state. Yeah. The state. streets in in Brandon. Oh, the side roads like side uh, side Man Road. They plowed that. Man Road was. They normally, because that's a main road. They normally keep that even, one clear. Even the, even the residential streets. Would you like your second? Mr. I will Williams? second it. Question: Is there anything else I need to add to that motion? <laughs> Did I cover it all before we get to that point? <laughs> Was you okay with his motion? Yeah, that'd be, that's but you're good with the motion? I okay. It. Okay, thank yeah. you. Whenever you're ready, Was that clear as mud, Mr. Bridge? Uh, <laughs> Do you remember what you said? <laughs> About, yes. Maybe not verbatim, so, but yes. You want to lower it from two inches to one inch, and you'd like. Well, what in the cost to do that? Cost. Okay. What the cost to see to see what it will cost to lower it from two inches to the one inch for plowing and the salt use, man man hours and whatnot. How big a, how much of a, more of a cost is that going to be? Can the road department handle that cost? I didn't say that, but is it okay if I add up, Mr. Grimm? Mm -hmm. uh, and see if the road department can handle that cost. 
And then when we get the information, then council will decide on if we're going to drop it from two to one. Is that correct? So what I'm saying? Right. Okay. You got it? I think so. All right. <laughs> 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 Good call. We call for the vote when you're ready, please. Okay, the second was Brim, correct? Yes. All right, so Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Just to make sure, this is just to get analysis. This is, yes. we're not lowering the one inch. We're not lowering it. Yes. Did you say yes? Yes, sorry. sorry. Okay. Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Vice Mayor Brim? Yes. No. This, um, Policy was that an act of was that an ordinance or just direction? We have all, it's been two inches for as long as I've been here. I have a feeling it's probably just a standard that people use is two inches, just because there's no use of plowing anything below that. It's just going to get compacted anyway. Okay. So I mean, a lot of the times that you don't see clear streets, you rely on that snow pack to get you through. So I mean, you're probably going to look at significant costs, but some I'll talk with Howie about is really his wheelhouse to get up with council on. And we can always look at the data and present to you. I mean, ultimately, okay. your guys' decision. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, and we got the vote done. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. Okay, awesome. And moving on with the service report, um, our planning and zoning report with me because Mr. Hutchison is also absent. So I'll just read his report for the record. Um, he has zoning, eight zoning applications received year to date, one planning board review application for site plan review at 1885 Bank Lakeview. Case will be heard 1-19-2022. Um, under economic development, community development, um, we do have the 2022 CHIP program. Uh, new, the program will be releasing and accepting applications in February. So in a couple of weeks, we'll have a lot more information to come. But what it looks like right now is for owner rehabilitation, we got up to $64,000 per unit. Uh, owner home repair up to $18,000 per unit. Down payment rehabilitation assistance, $65,000 per unit. And habitat of humanity <coughs> will uh, build a new home in the city limits uh, once a place is located to build that. So when you see these per unit, this is something that our citizens can apply for for aid on their behalf. The program is actually administered through Clark County. So this is actually a big win for the city. We're excited to hear the more information coming out here pretty soon on the matter. And Tool Lending Center open year round. Plenty of tools available for indoor and outdoor maintenance, repair, and projects. Uh, the rest are just stats, and I'd be happy to entertain any questions to get back to Mr. Hutchinson. That's only questions for Mr. Hutchinson. Nope. No, sir. Okay. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items. We have Sunshine Law trading dates. These are all virtual webcasts, but I do highly recommend council attend at least one of these dates on your own behalf instead of having me do it for you so we are all on the same page with Sunshine Laws. Um, so I will be doing a resolution probably February or March to, to just to do a safe catch that I can do it on behalf of you guys. But right now, these are through June 8th of 2022. And they have the dates listed um, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. on January 26th or April 21st, and from 9 a.m. to 12:15 p.m. on March 8th and June 8th. So they don't have any in-person classes recently uh, yet. If those come out after June, I'll definitely let you guys know. Um, I'm going to probably do one. Probably end up doing the January 26th one just to get it out of the way. Um, and get it done for the year. If anyone wants to attend these, let me know and I can register for you. It's not a big deal. Uh, 312 North Church Street. I did get a request that the city buy the property. I cannot do that on my own, so I did attach some information for council to make that decision. Um, it has zero benefit to the city. Um, I am not recommending the city buy it, um, but if council would like to motion uh, a yes or no to that, that would be greatly appreciated. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, uh, who recommended we buy this? No one property? recommended it. A citizen asked. Oh, a citizen asked. And I'm recommending no because it doesn't have any benefit to the city. Okay, I, I agree. But that we own enough property as it is. Exactly. <laughs> Good, Mr. Lindsay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Grant. That's across the street and a little south from the firehouse, correct? Yes. What would we do with it? Okay. I, nothing. That's what I'm, yeah. 
I don't know if you might use it as a rental property, but <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> please no. So he wants to buy my place, you can. Oh, that's a little I'll more feasible. It's downtown. That's prime office space. <laughs> I'm probably swapped. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. like a back so you need a motion yay or nay correct or you just let it die okay let's move on no thanks okay so all right citizen uh oh oh 2020 no where am i at water water bill shut off so this is something we've been talking about for a while and i do believe colleen and her staff and howie and his staff will be working february 17th around that time frame for this we're very excited about it but we get a lot of feedback about our, our water bills but they're not user friendly they're hard to follow so we're going to look at redesigning those and making them a lot more user friendly the other side of that is we shut people off a lot for a very minimal amount of money and it's a very not nice thing to do when someone only has a minimal amount on their water bill plus if we go out we break about that turn off and turn into a 400 dollars repair for us so we really need to take a look at the policy that council has in place that says how often we shut people off and how we do that. So we're going to look at things, make some recommendations of them. They're going to get their eyes on it and ultimately approve whatever kind of changes they want. But at the end of the day, it is really just to make it a lot more user friendly on our users. Um, so we're excited about that, but we'll have that to you hopefully uh, sometime towards the end of February um, around there. And again, very excited for that. 2021 codification update, I'm gonna be working on that. What that is, is all the codes that were passed in 2021 that has impact on their codes that are codified, they need to be sent to the, code, the company so they're updated online. So I'll be doing that in the next week or two. Some really good news about our phone system. I did sign an agreement with the Bridge Group. We are switching over to a VoIP system. Right now, our AT AT&T phone bills for landlines are close to $3,100 a month. That is a lot of money. So we looked at how can we reduce our monthly costs on that. So the bridge group is working with us. I did sign an agreement. We're taking our $3,100 a month bill down to 850 bucks. So it's gonna save a significant across, a amount of money across the board. Over the course of the next five years, and these are just projections, over five years, we're looking at $143,000 savings. And that equates to about 28,600. We're gonna to have to keep some of those landlines on AT&T because they're alarm systems, but we are looking for alternative ways around that right now. But right now we may have to keep one or two of those, but overall the city phone charges are going to significantly reduce, which is huge. So that's, that's a big win for us. Um, Citizen of the year update. Council had me design something. I didn't like the first one and scrapped it. And this is what we ended up with. So it's very nice, it's acrylic. Um, it's got a lot of dead space down here because when they named the person who it could be, all we need to do is they already had the template on file. Jane Smith in the year, right here. So I'll pass this around for council to look at. You want to get out to the audience, but it's a great thing. This is about $80 a pop. Don't break it. And it comes with this little nice little stand too. <laughs> Mayor's court update. We have uh, introduced some legislation tonight to amend the code. Uh, we had some, we found some um, changes we need to make with the software company who double checked our code. So we're looking at that. Uh, Jake did had catch all those prior to that, but we didn't get in front of a council enough, so we're fixing that tonight. Um, and background software installation is still going on. So I uh, uh, still don't have a, a solid start date yet, but every day is a little closer. Uh, Veterans Banner Program, I'm actually going to do that for the next meeting, so I have that here with me today, but I do want to get with Mr. Kicko on some things before I finalize things with council, so we're just going to hold that over to the next meeting. Um, and council in the meantime too, if you don't mind, start thinking about how much you want to charge the citizens. They're going to charge us $45 to do that. So we're going to have to have an amount to what we're going to charge our citizens, that charge and also the replacement cost. So we'll carry that next meeting just in the back of your mind, start thinking about how much you want to pass that cost onto the citizens. It's a few more bullet points. We're almost done. I promise. Um, we got some levies coming up, um, in 2023, that's our health fire and EMS. TCC appointments, I know I uh, mentioned at the last meeting, but when we get the new council set, we're gonna have to get that up to there. They have their first meeting in the second week of February. And then the 2022 Clark County EMA books, they're only gonna have five council members instead of seven because the other two are not here. So when you see those come out and you ask why there's only five, we've missed the deadline to get the publication with, with the current council that we have. And the last thing is volunteer firefighter dependent fund board. We do need two council members to sit on that board. I did include the uh, 2021 
members, so you guys can refresh your memory. But we need, would need a motion to appoint uh, members to this. What does this involve? If we, if we have to get together, then you get together and decide who gets the benefits and who doesn't. Not a lot. Not a lot? Not a lot. No. Yeah. The biggest thing this gives us is the uh, availability to uh, apply for grants. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we got to. Go I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Vice Mayor Graham and Councilman Lindsay to the uh, Volunteer Firefighters Fund. Second by Ms. Norkowski. And that is for Grim and Lindsay to be on the volunteer firefighters. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Okay. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rowald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grim? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. That motion is accepted 5 0. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that is all I have for council. Be happy to entertain any questions. Mr. Mayor. Right. Mr. Lindsay. I have a question for Mr. Bridge. On the new phone system, is it just the city building or all city phones? All city phones. Okay. Thank you. And we're just porting over the numbers, so the numbers should change. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Robel. Uh, that $45 for the veteran banners, that include the uh, hardware, or is it just the banner itself? That's how much you're charging. So that's everything. Okay. It's, yeah. Even the hardware that we're having mocked up at. Um, okay. Thank you. Well, I think we have the poles on like the like install. We have the yeah. poles. So just be like the banner. Itself. Okay. Yeah. But we have in the policy, like if it gets torn down, for, I mean, it's usually the responsibility of the applicant to replace it. So okay. we don't want to charge them full price to redo it, at least yeah. cost. But that's what you guys have yeah. decided. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Rubel. Anyone else? Or Mr. Bridge? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. Much appreciated as always, sir. All right, moving on to comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, please go to the podium. Uh, we'll need your name and address, and please try to keep it close to five minutes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, and staff, and citizens, my name is Dale Henry. And I'm a uh, former mayor of Springfield. I was mayor for two years, assistant mayor for six years, and worked for General Motors for 30 years, and worked for the Secretary of State for four years, for the Board of Elections here in the county for three years, been working with the school system for about seven years, and uh, I'm uh, working hard to get on the ballot to run for county commission for the third time. And I'm running as an independent. Of course, the Democrat and Republican only have to get 50 signatures to get on the ballot. Independent has to get 348. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm working hard to get there. And I think it's time for some new ideas and some fresh energy. And I guess I'd be running for uh, uh, Dick Lonis' seat. He's been on the uh, county commission for 12 years. So I'm just trying to uh, get some signatures on my petition. So anybody have any questions for me? I don't know how you have time. You seem like you are really busy. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I got four kids and, and uh, nine grandkids and a great-granddaughter. And uh, I'm the only one that lives in Springfield, though. So <laughs> I got to do something, right? Got to keep busy. Well, I, I think I have a lot of good ideas. And uh, I think it's time to uh, kind of think more in terms of diversity and equity and inclusion. and. This county will be 204 years old this year. We've never had a person of color in any countywide elected position. Uh, so none of those offices. So I think it's time for uh, me to break through that glass ceiling. So I'm working hard to get there and think of myself as an American first. And uh, that's why I'm running as an independent. I want to represent everybody. And, uh, you know, I want to represent you all as well. Okay. Thank you very much. I want to leave in a little bit. I want to make it down to Green Township's trustee meeting tonight. Yeah, no problem at all. Thank you for stopping by. We Thank you it. for giving me the time. Yes, sir. Drive safely when you do leave. Thank you. <laughs>
My name is Pat Craybacher, 307 North Henry Street. And um, I care deeply about the city of New Carlisle. Um, I did want to introduce the um, idea of this model city charter. I am serving on the Charter Review Committee. And um, we have learned a lot as we have studied the charter, not only our own New Carlisle charter, which is the form of a um, council uh, manager which is the most highly recommended form of governance for cities by uh, the National Civic League. They have been writing uh, recommendations for city charters for over 100 years. And uh, about 15 years into their work, they recommended the um, council manager form, which we have. And so that's a, a strength for New Carlisle. This city manager form is, um, has been used for over 120 years in our country. Um, it's now used by 61% of cities over 100,000 in population. And nearly half of the cities with a population of over a million use the city manager form. You often hear about, like New York, some of the big cities that have all the battling between the mayor and the council, for example. Um, but this is the form that is recommended um, by the National Civic League who wrote this model city charter. Now they recently, um, after about 15 or 20 years silence, they updated this charter again. I just happened to find it because I've, I'm a researcher and I was researching for the Charter Review Commission and I, we found this charter that had just been reissued um, like mid-December, it's actually dated November of 2021. Um, this, um, the city council manager form is a unitary system it's not a separation of powers system. And that was really mind-boggling to me. And I think that's an issue that we, as a city, have struggled with. Sometimes we act like we are one side versus the other. But the whole thing about a, a city, I mean, a council manager form of government is it's a cooperative form of governing together, including every citizen that's sitting here and the ones that are watching on television and those that have never even heard of a council meeting, for example. As citizens, we benefit from the council manager form, which gives democratic governance and also effectiveness, innovation, efficiency, and economy. And I think Randy demonstrated innovation tonight when he was talking about lowering the phone bills for a better type of um, system and lower cost. And that's exactly the innovation that the manager is supposed to bring to council. So well done, because you made my case for me. So we're inviting every citizen to come to our work session with council. We hope we have a date at the end of the meeting tonight. Yes, that's right. You guys say something? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Don Hall, 609 West Jefferson. Uh, thank you, Pat. Um, so the purpose of why I'm speaking, I've kind of been in exchange with emails and texts with Mr. Bridge, along with uh, uh, you, Mr. Mayor, um, about potentially holding a combined work session. Uh, I know at the 3rd of January meeting, one date was floated. Unfortunately, when we have you know 13 different people's schedules that we're trying to line up, uh, I thought I could master this through email, but I think this is probably the most effective way. So if you guys wouldn't mind pulling out your calendars, I have a couple dates to float by. Uh, don't have to have confirmation right this second. But uh, we're looking at Wednesday, Thursdays in February. Uh, so we have February 2nd, February 3rd, February 9th, and February 10th are our preferred dates. We'll have six out of six uh, commission members available at uh, all of those dates. And then we also have the 16th and 17th. We will have one of our commission members that will be absent, but we will have quorum with five. So uh, this was just uh, kind of a snapshot, uh, what Pat <clears throat> just went over. Uh, in a way, we'd kind of like to show off. Uh, Pat is a phenomenal researcher. We have a tremendous group of people with a varied amount of life experience and education. Um, and we are somewhat at a crossroads now that we discovered this model city charter. 
Um, we had made a lot of headwind. We had been almost a third of the way, uh, actually about 40% of the way through the charter when we discovered this model charter. Uh, some of the things that have been discussed is, is you know, making this more readable for the average citizen. What the model, what the National Civic League put together was not only a model charter that has almost the same language as what we have, but it also provides a commentary to kind of explain each section of the charter and its importance. So <clears throat> before we dig deeper into potentially adopting some of the you know, language and structure of the model charter, we would like to sit down uh, with you all to see what your thoughts are. Uh, last week we, pre we prepped materials for you guys so you guys will all have your individual binders for the meeting. Um, that will have our current charter, the model city charter, along with our working document of uh, the raw uh, uh, city charter that we've kind of carved out. So um, if any of those dates work for you guys, we look forward to um, sitting down and having some discourse. Yes, ma'am. Can you repeat those dates? Yes, February 2nd, February 3rd, February 9th, February 10th, and then also February 16th and 17th. So each Wednesday and Thursday. Correct. We have a, a, probably a good amount of information, I would think. We, are, we meet every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. and our meetings are scheduled for two hours and we use every second of that. And you guys are also, and along with the community members, uh, are welcome to attend any of those uh, meetings we have on Thursdays. The last date was the 17th, in case you didn't, I don't know if you got it or not. The only issue I had with it was the time. I, I'm fine with any of them, whichever you guys yeah. I can. Yeah. yeah. Second I mean, third won't work. I'm out of town that first week of February. Okay, so. What about if we came individually when we could make it? That would be awesome. Because I can be there any or all of those dates. Uh, and if anybody else can make it, they make it. Yeah. What time are you looking at, Mr. Hall? Uh, our meetings are scheduled at 5.30, but that's amendable to whatever your guys, uh, you know, schedule can work out if you'd like to make it 6.30. Uh, I do have a feeling that the meeting may run, uh, you know, a little bit more than an hour. Uh, we can always break it up and do, you know, more you know, combined working sessions if, if you guys think that there's you know, merit in doing that. We, we realize you guys have kind of entrusted our commission to do the research and come up with proposals. Uh, but where we're at with the dialogue, we kind of need some direction as to which direction you guys would like us to go. Um, I do think knowing that there's two vacancies on council right now that we assume are gonna be filled on January uh, 27th, we are shooting for February so we could have a full body of council. Um, because we do think having a joint session with all council, even understanding it can't be every single week, but you know, at least one periodically where we can just kind of get a pulse. Yeah. Because what I've told the, the commission along with some of you is this thing has no shot without some sort of uniformity of all of council. We need you guys to talk to your neighbors and friends, to get jazzed up about this thing, uh, because if this is gonna hit the ballot in the fall, uh, we'll be completely dependent upon you guys to help sell this thing. Where do you guys meet at? Here at the shelter house or someplace else? The original legal ad had us meeting at the firehouse, um, but we have been meeting at Lee's Chicken on Main Street. Well, uh, I'll be there every Thursday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. say that. Um, as you can tell, we'll get your dinner and I, go. Uh, yes, uh, you'd be amazed what kind of ideas can come to you when you have a big bucket of chicken in front of you. <laughs> now, it, it, uh, Mr. Scott Griffith is the owner operator of Lee's Chicken, and we are able to utilize uh, his banquet room that has all kinds of different you know, technology. He also has his executive offices back there where we can make copies very quickly. So there's just been you know, a, a lot of resources that he's you know, kind of donated to our commission. Um, but for this meeting, if we think we need a larger you know, place, whether it be the shelter house or the firehouse or any other community buildings, the library, uh, we would kind of like to have a round table type of, you know, discussion rather than a formal brief so we can, you know, maximize dialogue. 
But then we don't get chicken. I think yeah. <laughs> So is the time, is the time an issue for you? <laughs> yeah. Any earlier than 6 or 6.30, I'd have a problem. Okay. We have a date first. Which date are you guys going? I'm good with anything but the second and third. I'm out, okay, I'm out so of So we'll scratch the second and third as of right now. Mr. Lindsay is... I'm good with whatever date. Okay. Yeah. Me, so am I. Me too. I have all those open right now. Okay, so... Second we just third. need to... You, Mr. Hall, you said you could move the time? Yes, sir. What, right. what time would you need, Mr. Green? 6.30 out of the question? No. I think 6.30 would be fine. Cool. Okay, what date do you want to go for? Any of them is fine. Get it out of the way as early as possible. Might as well just do the, the next night. available one's February 9th. Wednesday, February 9th. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well do the 9th. The 9th? Yeah. The 9th it is at 6 o'clock? 6.30. 6.30 p.m. Where are you doing that at? Is the shelter house available, Randy? Can you look right, at the well, schedule? Yeah, just because, I mean, with... with, with Everything going on, I think the little bit more space we have, yes, sir, uh, the better off we all will be. And yes, sir. Be I mean, I'm passing up free chicken, which is hard. We could possibly <laughs> talk to our lawyer to make sure that Discount it's uh, <laughs> throw away. Only for the senior citizens, we may have some donated tenders. That's true. All right, I was looking at shoulder house, shoulder house availability two nine. I've got it up. It's open right it now. It is open, Colleen. Good. Then, yeah, I would, I would prefer the shelter house. Yes. Yeah. yeah, just so yeah. you got more room. Yeah, yeah. Can you book it? From I'm sorry. Room? That's all right. I'll, I'll yeah. hold it and okay. I can do it. So, let it work. Would you guys like us to par it down to an hour or? I mean, we can I'm posture open. it however you I'm guys open. want. However, open. however long it takes. Yeah. However long it takes. Okay. Well, I mean, it's been a reason. reason. A couple, three hours is not out of the question if it need to be, but. I mean, how long does your meetings normally run? I'm sorry, I'm <coughs> stepping on you. Our, our meetings typically go two hours. Yeah. Two hours. We, we try for an hour and a half. Yeah, we and shoot for because an we're hour. working over dinner hour. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the other thing. We've met about 13 times yeah. uh, every single week since August. So we've got a lot of stuff to share with you guys. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Hall and uh, Ms. Craybacher, I mean, after talking with you, you guys, are sound like you've got a, a lot of good stuff going on. So again, thank you to both of you and the rest of the group for the hard work because it sounds like you guys have got some solid motion going, which is going to benefit you know the whole community in the city. So thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bridge. Um, and if it is possible um, and okay with council, I would like some of my key administrative people to sit with you guys at some point in time just to give our two cents on some of the financial procedures that we see especially with the capital uh, improvement plan, how we have to submit that X amount of months prior to the budget. There's a lot of things that we can clean up operational wise that council may not be privy to because they're not work that they today. Would that be okay with council if we do? I don't have with a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and just we'll to give you guys kind of a word through section four, which is council and clerk. We're heading into section five, which is city manager. We wanted to meet with the council because we obviously just talked about your guys' jobs and just recently, we kind of had a charter-related issue involving council members, so that's why we thought this would be a great time. But yes, sir, right after we get, we will be trying to book uh, a meeting with your administration okay. along with your And we'll sir. coordinate that, because so I can just get them together. Yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Thanks. All right. Uh, anyone else? Public comments, questions, comments? All right. Moving on. Uh, committee reports, uh, we've just went over that. Mr. Hall, Mr. Uh, Craybacher, drop down to resolutions. Ms. Burner. Okay, hold on just a second. Turn the page. Okay, we have resolution 2022-201, introduction to public hearing and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general and water funds to the debt service capital and general funds of the city of New Carlisle. Council. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move to approve resolution 2022-01R. Second. And an explanation of this legislation piece. This is a yearly housekeeping. Uh, since the 2022 appropriations have been approved, uh, these are the subsequent transfers uh, from that approval. 
Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Any questions or comments from Mr. Bridge on this one? No. All right, when you're ready, when you're ready, Ms. Barner. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. The motion is accepted 5 0. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2022 01, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance approving a contract between the city's AFSCME chapter and the city of New Carlisle for a three year period. Motion to approve Ordinance 2020. Motion. Oh, not a motion. Two. Sorry. To accept. So it is. I'm not looking at here. <coughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hang on, I gotta read something. You need a motion to approve? Yeah, motion to approve. 2022-01 ordinance. Second. Second by Mr. First. 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 Second. 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 And this is another uh, year, it's not a yearly housekeeping thing, but our, some of our employees are unionized with the AFSCME chapter. Every three years, we have to renegotiate their contract terms. Um, two, two of my key administrators met and negotiated. I was out recovering from my heart attack. Um, everyone was very happy with the outcome, but we do need to put that in front of council for approval. Council, any questions, comments? Um, I just had a little bit of feedback on this one. Um, after getting this, and I know that Mr. Bridge was out for this, normally I think he would have sat in on the uh, negotiations. Um, you know, I, me personally, I'd seen a dollar, I'd had a dollar amount in mind for this, for this contract, you know, with the union, with, between the city and the union and the hourly and great employees. <clears throat> and I know that after speaking with Ms. Harris and Mr. Kitko, after uh, Mr. Bridget pointed me that direction, because you guys had sat in on the negotiations and obviously uh, you guys did a, you know, a pretty good job from what it sounds like. And I thank you for setting in on that. I think that was your first time you'd said, so congratulations on getting through it, because I know those can be tough sometimes. Uh, I really had a, a set amount in mind for the, for the three-year contract for the hourly employees, um, and I know it was talked about in previous meetings, um, and I know what the amount that you guys had come up with were, were not what I was hoping they would be, uh, but they're still better than what they've had in the past, their raises and whatnot. And the reason why, I've, and I'll just say I was... Am I allowed to say that dollar amounts here on this, Mr. Bridge? Say whatever you want. Okay, I just didn't know since it wasn't voted on if we were allowed. So, um, you know, I was really liking to see them get a dollar raise each year, which is a very high raise. Uh, the city had given out, you know, some very nice raises to the administration side of the house. And I think, in my opinion, what's good for, you know, for, you know, one part of the business. Good for the gander. There you go, what's good for the goose is what's good for the gander. And not that, not that the numbers that, that are in here aren't good, because they are definitely a step up in the right direction from what they have been getting. Uh, but the reasons I wanted to see them get a dollar, a dollar, a dollar for the next three years is, you know, one with COVID, you know, prices have gone up on everything. I, I just thought it would be a good morale boost, a good gesture, seems that we've handed out some decent raises, again, to the administration side. And then next year, back it back down, and I'm not saying to cheaper raises to 10 cents or 20 cents, but something that's more in line. Um, you know, I think I think uh, it just would have shown a, a good uh, you know good gesture to the hourly uh, employees because, um, it, and I'm not saying that the, the raises that we gave to any of the administrators were, were something I wasn't for because I was they were all warranted every raise that we've given has been warranted. I just I wanted to make sure that the hourly employees knew that that we truly appreciate them out in the winter fixing frozen uh, you know lines that are broken. Um, you know, cutting grass in 90, 100 degree weather, things like that. So um, that's just where I stand on this. I, I, it's not where I, I wanted it to be, but I still thank you guys for going in and, and doing what you felt was right. That's why. I will add that there was a rate study done. The administration was highly underpaid and the hourly people were on par. So that's where the dollar amounts came out for the raises. So everything was done. And mayor and vice mayor met with the two and negotiated it. It was, a, from what I heard, a fantastic meeting. It was. But there was a lot of data that was gathered prior to us making that final decision. Thank you, sir. All right. Anyone else? No, sir. All right. You can call for the vote when you're ready, man. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. 
Yes. Mayor Lowry? No. Vice Mayor Grimm? No. And Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. That motion passes three to two. Thank you. And moving on, we have Ordinance 2022 <coughs> 202, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending Chapter 238 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the Division of Fire. <coughs> Council. Move to accept 22, 2022 02. Second. Here's a second. Uh, Mr. Roadblock. Yeah, I think you should be hired. And an explanation of this ordinance as we it's looked at the rates of all key That's members of the no. staff. We also looked at the part of EMS. They were a little underpaid as well. So we have them bringing up the market rate. Um, even though Bethel just mm -hmm. passed an additional increase. Yeah, they, they Bethel Township <laughs> kind of cut our knees out from underneath us. They bumped their yeah. medics up to $20, $20 an hour, uh, a medic level two firefighter medic and their EMTs, level two EMTs, up to sixteen fifty an hour. Right. Council, any questions, comments, feedback? Mr. Mayor. Sir. The, uh, when I was on council before, we did a couple of these, and it seems to me that we are constantly behind the other departments in the area. The, the, uh, Firefighters in this country and the police officers in this country has the two most dangerous jobs in the country. Firefighters being number one. There's more firefighters hurt in the line of duty than there is police officers hurt in the line of duty. Personally, I think these, these rates are way low from where they should be. Personally, I think they should be more in line Chief said with Bethel Township. The, if we're going to keep good quality people on this department and not be poached by other departments like Bethel, Bethel Miami, Hewer Heights, Vandalia, Tip City, Springfield, we have to pay these guys a competitive wage. And these wages are not competitive. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. I have a question. Mr. Vice Mayor. This all comes out of the fire levy, correct? I mean, there's, that's how the fire, fire name has gets funded, yes, is through various levies. How is the fire levy doing? I mean, how much of an impact is this going to have on? It is going to have a, a, an impact, of course, because we're raising $2 an hour from what they were. Um, Ms. Harris could probably answer that question a little better than I can. She has all of our numbers. I, I got it. Appreciate it. We have passed the 2022 appropriations with this pricing structure in place. No one's debating that the fire and police are got tough jobs. We can only give what we can support. As I told council when they, before they wanted to do this race, we will always be behind the eight ball. We will never be able to compete with the privates. We will never be able to keep with the townships. They just run too much. They got too much money. We cannot, we cannot sustain having these rates and be in this continuing mouse, chase and mouse game with other people, how much they raise up. They need to be paid fairly, absolutely. But I think, Chief, didn't you, this was prior to Bethel Township. Yes, sir. It was online. So what it, would have, it would have met with everybody. We would have been. Yeah, on par with everyone. We would have been in the ballpark. Um, the other departments did do raises again and other than Bethel Clark being up here mm -hmm. um, and uh, other than them we're still pretty much in the ballpark dollar maybe a dollar difference an hour mm -hmm. uh, than what say Pike Township uh, Bethel Miami Township um, and as Mr. Bridge said we're competing against large townships with larger budgets 
that don't have the infrastructure to pay for that we have to pay for. Uh, and we have discussed things, uh, Mr. Bridge, myself, Ms. Harris, uh, things that we want to try to do in the next couple of years to where we can bring our raise, you know, salaries up even more. Our levy that, that's due to go back to the ballot in 23, where we look, will we be seeking a replacement levy instead of a renewal to raise that again to where we can possibly, you know, do more things, more raises, and also do other things that the city we need to. We need to take our fire department into the future for the city of New Carlisle, city of New Carlisle only. Mm -hmm. So the reason I said it was already passed by budget is if, if in council, if you want us to look at it again, we'd be more than been happy to take whatever you want and go back to the office and start working on that next week. Um, but we might have to do subsequent legislation to amend the appropriations and stuff like that with how much we're coming out. But we are here to work for you. If this is something you guys want to pass as is, great. My recommendation is go ahead and pass it for this year. Let's see how the levy money's coming in because as I said earlier, we're going to, have to put some more levies on for next year. Some of those vice mayor Grimm are permanent, but we do got a few that are up for renewal. And those renewals are the opportunity to kind of look at everything we got. Do we do a renewal or we do a replacement? Right now we're kind of leaning to doing a replacement because we're going to ask the voters for more millage and able to do and be a lot more competitive with that. But right now how it's set, the budget can support this what it is. But like I said, moving forward for next year, when we look at that millage and how much we're going to put back in front of the, the voters, because we have a contract we don't want to talk too much about that we're trying to, you know, work for our an advantage. Um, but we still have some unknowns with this particular department. And what he said about moving the department forward for the city is because it's supposed to be a part-time department. It is, it's just tough nowadays getting people to be in that profession. To have people work 30 hours a week, we got people who are working great more just to fill the schedule. So we have to get as a, as a community come together and find out if you guys want this to be a full time department or partially full time department, or how can we best suit the needs of the city? That's going to take funding. Is that going to be the general fund is going to supplement that, or recommended you put the voter in front of the voters for the increase in millage? So that's the some things we're working out with the particular fire and fire and EMS department. The fire service as a whole right now is in a very large downswing. Uh, even even full-time departments right now are struggling to get people. Uh, where departments would have 100, 150 applicants for six positions, now they're getting 10. And out of those 10, maybe four make it past an interview. Uh, and as Mr. Bridge said, we're a part-time department and it's hard to find people nowadays that want to do this job part time. And there is no volunteer. Yes, ma'am. The charter does allow both part time and full time. Yes. On yes, that is. Yeah. Where, where does it say that at? In the charter? In the charter. Where at? No, doesn't it say just refer to chapter 238? How's the staffing though? I mean, just I mean, I know we've talked about it a little bit. Our staffing right now is is one. It's it's applicable, but also two. Right now, it's a it's a roller coaster. Also, I, right now, I've got. Hang on, uh, Chief. Let them finish. The fire procedure says what they can and can't do. I just didn't know the fire department was even listed in the charter, mm -hmm. but it's not, so I don't see it. Before we have a vote, I have something else I'd like to learn by you guys. <coughs> yeah, my, yeah, usually if it says there is a placeholder in section five, but it usually just says refer to chapter 238 of the code. If I give the court charter up. Up okay, while they're reading, go ahead, Chief. Let's try this again um, so we can hear you. Right now, I have two firefighters, actually, three firefighters out with either uh, COVID or, or quarantined or. One's out for three months with back surgery. Um, we are hiring more people, but you have to look at the point. If I hire one person, that's 
anywhere from three to four months before they're in the street. One, they have to go through a, through a background check. They have to go through a drug test. Mm -hmm. They cannot work until that, but both of those are, are satisfied. Then it takes anywhere from two to three months to get them trained and qualified on our apparatus. And also that we also check their patient care and Q&A their runs doing patient care because we will, even though they got an EMT card or a paramedic. Hang on just a second, Chief. <laughs> You guys good? Yeah, we'll look at it. So they have actual operating hang, hang on, Mr. Bridge. Go ahead and finish, sir. Uh, just because someone has the EMT card or a paramedic card or a fire card is not meaning that they're qualified. We want to make sure that their patient care is what we want it to be. Um, just like right now, I've got five applications that are in the air waiting for to get background checks back from. And that's nothing, no fault of ours or the city's or anybody else's, it's just BCI takes a long time. Sometimes they get backlog and getting those those applications back and then get them started on a training <clears throat> program. Um, and again, like I've said before, we're not the only one in this boat rowing it. Right. Every department in the area is the same way. That Bethel Clark, the reason they raised the rates so high wasn't to hire new people. They raised the rates that high just to keep what they have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> Good, Mr. Bridge. No. Yeah, just looking up. So okay. It says in the 238, it has a limitation on how many hours they can work over a two week period. And I think it's 72, if I recall correctly. 70? Yes, sir. 72 over two yes, weeks. Yes, sir. Period. Okay. So, then one of the things we want to look at is we do the full time <coughs> stuff. We do that. We have to offer the insurance to it. So, yeah. some of the things we got to look at. Okay. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, on this ordinance, I would like to to uh, make a couple of comments for your guys' input, and maybe we can send this back and get it something <coughs> done with it that's a little different than what we have. Uh, I'd like the firefighters to be at least $13 an hour. and. But the chief said that he has people coming on board. Do you have a probationary period, chief? That's what their check off the time is, yes. But they're okay. paid at the same rate as what their certification is. Would it be a problem if we did a probationary fee you're that at, is something you're at, just a tad you're less? Another, you're adding another pay scale, and it's okay. really not needed. Okay. When I, on the firefighter side, I'd like to see that go to $13 an hour. I mean, anybody that has the, the gumption to run into a fire when everybody else is running away and they have a, a high probability of in that fire of it collapsing on them or something blowing up on them or falling through a floor or falling through a roof, I, I would like to see them compensate a little more than 11 bucks an hour. I mean, that's, that, you know, you can go to McDonald's and make more than that. And I don't think we want our firefighters going and leaving. So for council's consideration, if you agree with me, I would like to send this back and have it come back at $13 an hour just for the firefighters. The rest of it is fine. They get their base plus incentive if they're an EMT, AB, you know, basic to cross train and whatnot. How many fire runs do you guys go on a year? Uh, I'd have to look at the breakdown, uh, boss. We 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 run a le under less than 100 fire calls a year. And I get. Sorry, Mike. Go ahead, uh, Chief. How many firefighters do you have that don't have the EMTA? I have uh, what we call our fire onlys. We have right now of uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we're, I mean, because I know you and I have talked about you, you wanting to get these guys double certified EMT firefighter both, which would put them well above the 13 right. that we've already discussed. So, and then also, too, you've got some of them that are that are happy being firemen and they don't want to be EMTs. Yep. <laughs> yes, and, oh, yes, yes, but, and see, and also, you have to understand for someone to be a to be on the department and be only fire certified, they must live within the city's limits. Yep. <clears throat> that way they can respond 
what we call pay for call. Mm -hmm. They're not on the part time program, they're on the pay for call program. Um, and they, res they respond to the station for the apparatus. I'm good, sir. Yes, sir. Thank Sorry. You. Commander. Mr. Parsmeyer. Uh, I'm thinking go ahead and pass this for the time being. Let the administration crunch some numbers, see how much we can pay them, and then look at that maybe a month or two down the pipe. I don't want to hold the numbers off. But if we don't pass this, they're stuck at 10 bucks an hour. At least we're giving them 11. Yeah. I'm sorry, Bob. How long is it that typical fire call? But it could come back to us in two weeks with the other numbers that they could crunch in the two week period. Is what I'm looking at. Oh, he's already crunching the numbers. <laughs> I, I just think $11 is a little low for a firefighter. Mm -hmm. I used to be a firefighter. I'm a retired firefighter. I've been hurt in multiple fires, spent time in the hospital, and it only takes one fire to kill you. And doing it for 11 bucks an hour, I just don't, I just, I, I didn't agree with it. You know, when I was here before, and it was a blow $10 an hour, you know. But we can only pay what we can support. Right. right. <laughs> Way to go, Bill. <laughs> for the money that we've given out to well, you guys, I wouldn't hear, but for administrative reasons, and the, and the, the union contract we just passed. If these guys are unionized, it'd be a whole lot more than what I want. Oh, I know. I mean, it just, it only makes sense to me. So, if we go up from the to 13, just rough estimate, 100 calls, eight people responding, four hours per call, that's 32 hours. Eight times four is 32, times up by 100, 3,200, times up by three, 9,600. So let us, what I recommend, pass it, let us go look at it and bring it back to you guys. What was that last figure you said? 3,200 times three. 9,600. Oh, 9,600, okay. Okay. I thought he said something else. And that's on the low, so if I do 30. No, we have any motion for it. Okay. And that's why I'm doing these numbers real quick. I'd rather I'd rather take time yeah. to sit down with them, <clears throat> with Colleen, and look at the budgets and look out two or three years. And if we could do it, awesome. But I don't want to do it blindly without putting the projections in mm -hmm. Excel. Does that make sense? Yeah, and uh, totally does. So do we get a mo can I get a motion for this? We already did. You already have it. Okay. Like to not vote on this. And just do it at the next meeting. Can we move the table? table? Want to lay it on the table? All right, it's up to you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm overstepping my back. Mr. Mayor, sir, I move to table this ordinance till we see what we can do with it. Okay. I'm not gonna. If somebody, somebody, no, you just want to I disagree. Back. I'm sorry. My people have been waiting for raises for all, for over two years, for over a year. We do not need to table this and then wait another two or three months to get raises when all the other departments in this area have already gotten their raises. It would be to be next vote on it. Miss Burner, would you please call for the vote? Should he rescind his motion? Do you want to take your Yeah, I'll, I'll rescind it. Okay. We're dealing with okay. the original motion. Yes, the original what I read. For the ordinance. All right, and my second was Roadwalk. So Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Okay. And Councilman Rodwald. Yes. All right. That motion passes five to zero. Thank you. And moving on, the next one is just a read only. We have Ordinance 2022 03, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 7th. An ordinance amending Ordinance 2021 36 that established a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city's mayor court. Um, would you like me to go ahead and read other business? Uh, please. All right, so we have a special meeting of City Council, which will be Thursday, January 27th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. to review applications and appoint to the vacant City Council seats. We have an intergovernmental joint board meeting January 31st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Children's House. And any um, open discussion for city-related matters? 
Uh, just a reminder, we are still taking applications for the two empty council seats. So um, you can find that on the city's website. I believe it's paid, uh, posted on the city's uh, Facebook page and a couple of the other council members' pages. The deadline is this Friday at the close of the city building office, which is at 4 p.m. And then, as Ms. Berner just read, we'll do the end reviews on the 27th on a Thursday. So if you're interested, if you know somebody's interested, just get those in. Mr. Mayor. The intergovernmental meeting sure. dinner is at 6 p.m. The meeting starts at 6 30. Gotcha. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, it's an open meeting. All right. Anything else? We need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Graham, Vice Mayor, second <coughs> by Mr. Roadwell. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Nogowski. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rebel. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you.